I would like to first ask uh, Michael to take the floor and uh, give us his key points. Um, be brief, you have your three, four minutes, and we will follow up with questions. Michael, please go ahead. Thanks very much, uh, Joachim, and I hope everybody <clears throat> can hear me. I did also want to add that in my first uh, three days here, I had the wonderful privilege of visiting uh, some um, communities with EFAT and, and WFP, uh, some, some Canadian-funded initiatives, and was able to speak with smallholder farmers and one suggestion I would like to make is that perhaps in a future 2020 conference we could consider um, also um, integrating something like that in the program. It's, it's very useful and nourishing. Um, the importance of integrating resilience in a post-2015 agenda. I think we've heard a lot of uh, arguments about the importance of resilience, but we haven't actually heard a lot about um, why um, we should include this in, in the actual 2015 development agenda that is going to be negotiated over the next year. And I would like to under, underline that it's, it's the sustainable development agenda um, that we're going to be talking about development goals that integrate um, social issues, economic issues, and environmental issues. So all three developments of sustainable development. And I think this presents actually the perfect opportunity uh, to consider resilience as a guiding uh, principle or overarching framework for the negotiations. Um, and as we have heard over the last three days, resilience is about integrating different dimensions um, of humanitarian assistance and development cooperation in order to help households, communities, uh, and nations bounce back from uh, economic, social, or environmental shocks. And I think if the international community is serious about eradicating poverty and alleviating hunger and malnutrition by 2030 or 2025, um, if we can agree on IFPRI's more ambitious agenda, then uh, it must put resilience at the heart of the 2015 debate. So some of the entry points. Uh, it's interesting, if you look at uh, the work of the open working group of the General Assembly, which is uh, sort of the precursor to uh, the negotiations that are going to start in the fall of this year, um, resilience does come up from time to time, but not as much as you would actually expect. Um, in the more than 100 targets that have been identified for negotiation, uh, resilience is only uh, mentioned explicitly in four of those targets. And Joachim, if you'll let me just um, give those four examples very quickly, I'll, I'll quote. I know, I don't think I'll be able to make it, but um, uh, so we, we find resilience under poverty eradication, um, where, where we speak of building resilience of the poor and reducing by X percent deaths and economic losses related to disasters. Under sustainable agriculture, um, there's a reference to achieving um, climate smart agriculture that is resilient and adaptable to extreme weather. Under sustainable cities and human settlements, um, I know 2020, by 2020, increase X percent the number of cities adopting and implementing policies and plans towards resilience and adaptation to climate change. And under climate change, uh, we find building resilience and adaptive capacity to climate-induced hazards in vulnerable, in vulnerable countries. So a couple of things jump out, and, and I'll end uh, there. Um, uh, one is um, that, and I think, I think this, is, this, is, this is where the entry points are. One, resilience seems to be very narrowly identified with climate change and natural disasters currently in, in the negotiation framework. Um, and, and if I take one thing away from this conference this week, it is that um, resilience is not just about climate change or natural disasters, it's about dealing with all sorts of shocks. And the second issue um, is that, uh, we, you know, we've spent the last three days in Addis focusing on the importance of resilience for development, yet our colleagues in New York um, have not identified resilience either as an overarching theme or as a specific focus area. And um, I think it's very unlikely to, that we'll have a uh, standalone goal on resilience. I'm not advocating that we should, but I think uh, this is the kind of discussion that we should be having. Well, so far Thank you. you say it's uh, uh, scattered. You find in your text analysis resilience. What will you do to, uh, and what will Canada do to bring more of resilient thinking into the set of instruments uh, for the uh, sustainable development agenda? I thought I was out of time. <laughs> you get an extra minute if you give a good answer to it. <laughs>
uh, resilience is certainly very important to Canada. Um, and um, I, I've been in touch with my, uh, with my colleagues in uh, New York, with my colleagues in Ottawa as well, to, uh, to discuss how um, we might uh, mainstream resilience. I don't think we're looking necessarily at having uh, a, a separate goal on resilience. I think the concept of resilience, the fact that it must be multi-stakeholder, multi-level, um, um, multi multi-purpose, um, lends itself much better to a mainstreaming or cross-cutting approach. And, and I think this is what we're yeah. going to be arguing for. Yeah. Thank you.